All right, now this is the kinestasis part three, where we are taking our animation, remember whatever our animation is, yours will be a lot longer than this, and we're gonna export it out as a movie that has audio. So one of the things that you've gotta make sure that you are doing is you don't have any excess composition that is dead air, if you will, or dead screen that goes black. So what I would do is I always define my workspace, the beginning and end points. So I want to start here. And in this case, I want to render out everything within these two boundaries. Okay. And I'm, this is called my work area. Or I can go back to my composition settings and make my composition whatever this value is. So if I have an extra time here, I want to get rid of that but I'm gonna just work within my work area and that's gonna be an option that I can choose. Now, I'm gonna choose my, comp my composition that I'm going to render, which is my candy kinestasis composition. Going to, I'm gonna go up to composition and say add to render queue. That's gonna open up a panel down here and this panel is going to be where I get to set the kind of uh, the kind of settings that I want for this animation to be rendered out as. Okay, so I'm going to start with some very uh, important parts. First, you have to know where you're going to output to. Do not render this out to your graphics server account in the lab. Render it out to your desktop. If you try to render it out to your graphics server in the lab, it will fail most likely, and you will not get a render. You'll just get an error and a message, and you'll have wasted a significant amount of time, and you'll have nothing to show for it. So you want to render it out to the desktop. So follow what I'm going to show you. You can ignore the type of file it is right here because we're going to change that in a, in a few minutes. But what I do is I'm going to click on this yellow or this orange text here. So I'm clicking on that. It brings me up an output movie two window. So this tells me where I want to put it. So I'm going to render this into the folder to which I'm working with. So this is my kinestasis lab. So I'm going to render it here, I'm giving it a name, candy kinestasis. I'm going to take out my spaces. And then if I had an option right now, I would choose QuickTime movie, but I don't because I'm going to change that in a second. So I've given it, I know where it's going. You have no excuse for rendering something out not knowing where you are rendering out. That's part of the process. If I have to show you or find it for you, that's a failure. You have to be aware of what you're doing. So every step matters. So I'm putting it on my desktop. I'm putting it in the proper folder, Kinestasis Lab. And I'm giving it a name, Candy Kinestasis. I'm going to save that. So now I've, dis I've told it where it's going to go. Now I'm going to go over here to render settings. I'm going to go to click on that. I get the render settings panel. I'm going to choose and make sure best is selected. If I do anything else than best, it will choose a lower quality to render that at. It may be very, very pixelated and low quality. I want best. Resolution, I want full. I want the full resolution, the full size, which is 640 by 480. Now, the next thing I need to worry about is time span because I can choose the length of composition and in my case, I had a two minute composition and I only animated about 15 seconds. So it would render the entire length of my composition if I chose that, which would be a whole lot of dead space. But because I defined my work area, I'm choosing work area only, meaning it will only render between those two little slider points that I had defined which is exactly what I want. And it tells me over here that that's seven seconds, okay? If I had chosen length of composition, that's one minute, 59 frames, or one minute, 59 seconds and 27 frames. If I choose work area only, it's just through that small area. So you can always check and see the duration of your animations right here to make sure it's correct. Now, I don't need to adjust anything else over here. So I'm going to say OK. It changes my settings here. Now the next part is the output module. I'm going to click on this. The output module is the kind of file type I am going to be creating. And this is very, very important. The format is going to be called a QuickTime movie. QuickTime movies are, are nice to work with. I 
am going to define a video output codec, uh, the type of codec that I can use to compress my files. And I go to my format options. And here I'm choosing the MPEG-4 video. There's, we have options to have no compression. We can render out as a, different types. We can actually render out as image sequences. We can an, render out with a lot of different types of uh, uh, compression, but we're choosing MPEG-4 video. So I have MPEG-4 video, and I'm saying basic video settings. So I am choosing the basic video settings of 100, meaning it's the highest quality. Okay, make sure you have the proper compression. You must have the comp proper compression. Usually if you do a large video, the compression will allow it to play a lot more smoothly. And I don't have to worry about anything else. The compression type, or the codec is MPEG-4. The basic video quality is 100%. I'm going to say OK. Because we have video with audio, we have to go down and choose to add the audio output channel. So I have to turn this on and check this. And it's going to give me the 16-bit stereo output channel. And that's what I want. So all I have to do is turn this on. I don't need to change the bit rate. I don't need to change anything else. I'm going to leave it just like this settings. So I have, I have turned on my video output. Okay. I am rendering out with just RGB values. I can render out with alpha or that alpha channel. We don't need to worry about that right now. We are going to be adding the audio. So now I have added audio. So now I have a QuickTime movie with the MPEG-4 video format with audio file checked. So I have audio. If I don't check this, my video will have no sound. Everyone needs to have sound on this particular homework. I'm going to say OK. Now I have, I know where my file is going, and notice that this has changed. It's not AVI anymore. Now it's a .mov, which is correct. So I know where it's going. It has a name. It's going into my, my desktop, into the folder. This is my settings saying that it's going to be the best quality with the, the, the correct resolution. And this is telling me it's going to be a QuickTime movie with Sorensen's, uh, or no, not Sorensen's, with uh, MPEG-4 and audio. Once I have these things, filled out and correctly added, I can go over here and click the render button. This render button is then what's going to take and allow After Effects to render this film. So let's watch what happens. Now it's going to go back and play through my entire film, rendering out every frame. If I have a pretty light scene like I do here, and you'll notice it plays this little tone whenever it's finished. Okay, so if that's done, I should be able to go to my lab folder and I should see my QuickTime movie. There it is. Now you must play that to make sure everything's okay. Play with QuickTime player. And it should bring up my QuickTime uh, window, my QuickTime viewer. It's the right size. I should have this. All right. Okay. So everything worked properly. I have a little bit of space because I don't have any images, and then it comes in on the beats, and I have the proper movement and transitions. So actually, if I saw this and I saw how this image stops, I would go back and fix it, and I would redo it, re-render it, and fix that. It doesn't feel right. Everything, everything else looks okay, but I didn't like that. So I would fix that and then go back. But I made sure I can see the audio. Watch this it has audio it's playing, and I can see it playing over there. All right, so that's taking your image, taking your After Effects scenes, and rendering it out. It's very important that you have the proper settings, that you add audio, and you know where it's going, so you can find your file. All right, so when we, that's what you'll be turning in your QuickTime movie. All right, have fun.